An unexpected ray of light has pierced NASA's cloudy skies. At last, the International Space Station has a promising new candidate stepping up in place of the indefinite delays faced by other space stations currently under contract with the agency. And that's even better when this candidate has the support of SpaceX. So, who is truly set to save NASA's ISS from trouble? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. The situation with the International Space Station is becoming increasingly serious. Having exceeded its original design lifespan since it was put into service in 1998, the ISS is now facing multiple mechanical and structural issues. Signs of deterioration are becoming more evident, from small cracks to leakage incidents, making safe operation even more challenging. The possibility of retirement before 2030 is very real, creating an urgent need to find a replacement solution. Meanwhile, NASA is grappling with a dual challenge under the Commercial LEO Destination CLD program. On one hand, they need to ensure a replacement station is in place before the ISS retires. On the other hand, CLD program partners are facing considerable obstacles. Axiom Space, for example, despite having successfully conducted several commercial flights to the ISS, is struggling with developing its own modules due to financial and technical hurdles. Fortunately, NASA's found a new ray of hope with Vast Space emerging as a promising potential partner. Founded in Long Beach, California, this company has quickly become a key solution that could help the U.S. Space Agency overcome current challenges, particularly with its ambitious proposals for low-Earth orbit development. After announcing its private space station, Project Haven 1, last May, Vast Space continued to capture attention with Haven 2. While Haven 1 is scheduled for a launch on SpaceX's Falcon 9 in August next year, Haven 2 is anticipated to become a highly viable replacement for the ISS, paving a new path forward for NASA's struggling space program. Vast states that they developed Haven 2 to offer a compelling solution to ensure the continued presence of U.S. and international partners in LEO after the ISS retires. The company declared its intent to compete in NASA's Phase 2 commercial LEO destination CLD program with Haven 2's design on October 14th. Our competitors have put designs of what they plan to do, and Vast has only shown Haven 1, said Max Hout, chief executive of Vast in an interview. This is really the first time to explain what we intend to do. Haven 2 will launch as a single module aboard a Falcon Heavy rocket as early as 2028. The module will be based on Haven 1, but 5 meters longer with twice the usable volume of Haven 1 and have docking ports on each end. Hout noted that the launching for the first module in 2028 would overlap with the ISS and provide protection against scenarios like Russia's early withdrawal from the ISS partnership, which could potentially impact operation before 2030 as per NASA's current plans. VAST then plans to launch three more modules at roughly six-month intervals in 2029 and 2030. These modules will connect in a linear configuration, identical in structure but equipped with different lab facilities. VAST will use this time to upgrade the station's initial open-loop life support system to a closed-loop system by the time the fourth module becomes operational. The next phase of the station's development will involve launching a larger core module 7 meters in diameter aboard a SpaceX Starship in 2030. The four existing modules will detach and connect to four separate ports on the new core module in a cross configuration. There will also be an additional docking port, a separate berthing port, and a robotic arm for visiting vehicles that cannot dock autonomously. The core module will also include an airlock for spacewalks or EVAs. It's not actually a current CLD known requirement outside of the airlock, but we believe the nation should keep the ability to test spacesuits and do EVAs in low Earth orbit. VAST then plans to launch four more modules that will be attached to the original four modules. They will again be based on the same design as the first two, but will have special features. One will have a cupola 3.8 meters in diameter, a bit larger than the one on the ISS, and other external payload racks and airlocks like those on the ISS Kibo module. By that time, it's more capable than the ISS, he said at the Haven 2 station when completed in 2032, and we hope and expect more capable than anything China and Russia have in orbit at that time. While VAST will depend on SpaceX's Starship and Falcon Heavy to launch Haven 2 modules, they will not be a dependency on the Crew Dragon spacecraft. The single module Haven 1 station will use Crew Dragon for some life support capabilities, but Hout said that those will be handled by systems on Haven 2 modules. If other vehicles are either more appealing or equally appealing commercially, he said of the crew transport vehicles, we're definitely open to them. He added that NASA may require CLD companies to support both Crew Dragon and Boeing Starliner or other future commercial crew vehicles and not rely on a single company spacecraft. 
Vast is similarly deferring to NASA on the orbit Haven 2 will be in. Also, while Vast has expressed an interest in developing spinning space stations that can provide artificial gravity, there's no plans for that capability on Haven 2. Haven 2 is really designed for NASA as the anchor customer, and NASA's requirement is the opposite of artificial gravity. It's a microgravity laboratory in space. That focus on NASA is based on the near-term prospects for customers for Haven 2. Outside, the company sees long-term potential in commercial applications like in-space manufacturing of pharmaceuticals or semiconductors, but it's unclear how long it'll take for those markets to emerge. Other customer segments include national space agencies as well as private astronauts. We believe that NASA as an anchor customer, he said, along with other space agencies, and we can be a profitable company. Winning a Phase II CLD award from NASA, which involves competing against Axiom Space, Blue and Lead Orbital Reef, and Starlab Space, which all received funded agreements from NASA in Phase I of the program, is essential to Haven too, he said. We operate under the assumption that we are all in on winning CLD. The announcement of Haven 2 comes days after the company provided an update on Haven 1. Vast showed off designs of the interior of the module, calling it a human-centric industrial design that introduces new dimensions of bold creativity and efficiency. Historically, space habitats have prioritized pure functionality over comfort, resulting in utilitarian environments dominated by equipment and technical interfaces. Vast's approach acknowledges that as space emissions become longer and more commercial, the psychological aspects of habitat design become increasingly important. Astronauts living in zero gravity pose unique design challenges. Creating an environment that's both highly efficient and naturally comforting leads to totally new results, said Peter Russell Clark, the designer who led work on the Haven 1 interior design. Haven 1 interiors are unprecedented, precisely engineered, and sensitively designed to ensure its occupants thrive in space. The specific design elements reveal careful attention to both psychological and practical considerations. The 1.1-meter domed window addresses the well-documented desire of astronauts to view Earth, which has been shown to help maintain psychological well-being during the long-duration spaceflight. The use of maple wood veneer is particularly revolutionary. While it must meet stringent safety requirements, it introduces natural elements that can help create a more Earth-like environment. The multi-use common area affects the reality of space limitations while acknowledging the importance of social interactions in confined spaces. The development of a patent-pended sleep system demonstrates Vast's innovative approach to the fundamental challenges of spaceflight. Sleep disturbance is one of the most common complaints among astronauts, affecting both performance and health. A customized pressure system could help address the lack of gravity's effects on sleep quality, potentially solving a problem that has plagued space travelers since the beginning of human spaceflight. That design effort has been guided by people like former NASA astronaut Drew Foisel. From communication and connectivity to private space and interacting with others on board, he said in a statement, every detail has been designed with an astronaut experience at the core of our work. The timeline and financial aspects provide interesting insights into Vast's business model. The planned investment of a billion dollars by the time of the first crew launch is a significant commitment, particularly for a private company. The combination of founder funding and customer revenue suggests a hybrid business model that could help insulate the project from market fluctuations while maintaining commercial viability. Max Hout's comments about continuity between Haven 1 and 2 reveal a strategic approach to development. By leveraging the investment and learning from Haven 1, Vast aims to reduce costs and accelerate the deployment of Haven 2. This approach could help establish economies of scale in space station manufacturing, potentially making commercial space stations more economically viable in the long term. It's very important to have continuity into Haven 2 to ensure that Haven 2's low cost can be built quickly, but also is on orbit as early as possible, Hout said. And that's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.